John, we're going to have a chat today about a very, very complicated problem in, in philosophy and theology, and we'll, we'll see if we can make some sense of it, called the analogy of being. Um, just to kick our conversation off, I wonder if I could have a go at explaining the importance of analogy in the work of the 13th century Dominican theologian Thomas Aquinas. This is often where the debate begins. And what Aquinas famously says about analogy concerns our use of language to refer to God. And uh, he says that our, our language about God is neither univocal, uh, so talking in the same way about, about God and creatures, neither is it equivocal, talking in completely different terms. Uh, so an example of, of an equivocal use of a term would be a river bank and a high street bank. We're using the word bank in completely different ways. Uh, but we don't want to say that God's goodness is the same as our goodness uh, in any univocal way either. So Aquinas says we, we use words analogously of God, but he, he has quite a particular way of understanding analogy. So uh, what he, he says is, roughly speaking, um, using the word healthy, for example, the breakfast cereal I had this morning is healthy, my medicine is healthy, and the exercise I will take this afternoon is healthy. But those are only healthy because they relate to me as I am healthy in myself. So the word healthy refers primarily to me and then it's by attribution to these, to these other things. So these other things are not healthy in themselves, mm -hmm. but they are uh, only healthy insofar as they relate to me. And so what Aquinas wants to say is, um, using what this, this is known as analogy of attribution, he wants to say that uh, when we use a word, for example, like good, uh, when we say God is good, what we're saying is that good is predicated primarily of God. God is good in himself. When we say that John and Simon are good, we are good by attribution, by virtue of our relationship to God. So, mm -hmm. so we then use these words analogously, and the foundation of that is fundamentally a relationship with the divine. So that's, that's just the linguistic use. That's how we use words about God, uh, about the infinite. Um, and Aquinas is making comments about how religious people, theologians and believers use their language liturgically. Uh, it's a very practical mm -hmm. approach to analogy. But it then gets moved on into something much more fundamental, doesn't it? So I wonder, could you explain to us how, how it moves then into something more metaphysical? Well, th 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 there are lots of arguments in modern readings about, of Aquinas about you know, whether this is primarily a linguistic issue or a metaphysical issue, but really this is superficial. The texts don't really leave us in any doubt yeah. that for Aquinas, as for other medieval um, thinkers, um, questions about analogy exist on at least three levels, and mm -hmm. you, you really already <laughs> indicated all three. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a grammatical issue, yeah. you know, the, the, um, the same word gets used al almost accidentally in different ways. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a logical issue, mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to thinking about a category like health, that's much more apparent, that yeah. it's not merely about um, language. But it, it's finally um, an ontological issue, mm -hmm. be because you can't um, confine um, the, these issues about health merely, merely to logic, because right. um, what's the register you've obviously invoked? The register is causality. Yeah. Uh, so we find Aquinas talking about univocal causality, equivocal causality, mm -hmm. um, and analogical um, causality. Mm -hmm. And I think the most difficult thing there for us probably is that um, the Middle Ages tended to think that the universe was connected. In other words, that in some sense, effects are like their causes. Mm. Um, and while that might be difficult for us, if, if you think about it, you know, imagining that there's no mediation, there's no mm. third term between effect and its cause would mm. be rather difficult. Mm. And, and I think part of their thinking about God is that that must principle must apply all the way back up to God, mm. you know, that mm. the world must be in some sense like God, and mm. that really only gets um, dislodged in the, in the later Middle Ages. Mm. Mm. Um, so even within an inner worldly level, that there could be a sense of an analogical cause, that a cause fitted in some sense mm. with its effects, and, and, and in other ways didn't. 
Um, but certainly by Aquinas and by others, that was seen as supremely important when it comes to, to thinking about God. Mm. That um, God is not totally unlike us, but he's not totally like us. He's more unlike us than he's like us. Yeah. But it's, some, yeah. it's, it's somehow somewhere in the middle, um, mm. although that's the wrong term. Mm. But that partly follows because God has created the entire world mm. as in, in some sense, reflecting him. Mm. So um, mm. you can't sort of prize apart the doctrine of analogy from a certain understanding mm. of creation mm. and, the, and the idea that creation is in some sense imaging God. Yeah. And I guess what I've always found very interesting about that, that idea is that once you, you think that our existence is analogical, our, our created being is, is uh, not uh, self-subsistent, that it only is in relation to God, who, who is being itself. The, the remarkable implication of that for the doctrine of creation, for example, is that there are not two things. There are not two foci of being. When God creates, there's not God, and then all of a sudden, God plus something standing alongside yeah. him, um, which is how I, I suspect most people imagine creation. Yes. But uh, what, what happens then for Aquinas is that supremely creation is we are only by participation mm -hmm. uh, so w we we only exist because we we have a what you in your own work call an improper share in, in god's existence yeah. yep. so it's it's not proper to us so even our ability to share in God's existence is a gift of Absolutely. the divine. Absolutely. I mean, Aquinas, when he's talking about analogy, makes it very clear that our words refer to things and then things refer to God and they refer to God because of participation, as, as you put it. And um, he, 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 from our point of view, he adds this perspective to what appears to be on the whole his Aristotelianism. Mm. But what we now know is that uh, late antique commentators on Aristotle and supremely Alexander of Aphrodisias mm. already started to talk in this strongly analogical mm. sense. And quite, you know, um, Aristotle had talked about pros hen causality, which is mm. roughly like your medicine example, but Alexander starts already talking in rather more Neoplatonic ways mm. about how um, every effect somehow participates in its cause and yeah. points towards its cause. And this gave the Middle Ages license to link Aristotle to Dionys Dionysus. Right. So whereas when we read Aquinas now, we say, well, this bit sounds like Aristotle. Yeah. This bit sounds like a Neoplatonist, Dionysus. That's not how it was no. in the High Middle Ages. Yeah. For them, it had become natural yeah. to read Dionysus and um, Aristotle together. So, so whereas Aristotle is mainly talking about how we sort of move towards an end, mm. the Christian and the Dionysian element gives us a, more a sense of, of also vertical causality, right. that, that everything is taking us you know, mm. through, through degrees, um, pointing upwards. So everything participates in God. And, and somehow participation hovers between the sense mm. of something like a physical part mm. and the sense of something imitating, yes. li like a mirror. Yeah. And it, it, it only imitates because it's a part, and it's only a part um, because it's a mirror. And it, it's precisely that way of looking at things that gets you away from the idea that we're either you know, a part of God on a pantheistic yeah. model, yeah. or that we're something totally separate yeah. from God. Yeah. Um, you know, God, God is everything. You know, the, there is, in one sense, there isn't anything besides God. Yeah. Um, it's only from our point of view as receiving God yeah. that there is something apart from God. Right. And this is, um, you know, very clear in Dionysus and uh, I think sometimes clear al also also in Aquinas. So so things point back to, to God, but not simply because they're imitating God, mm. in which case you could say, well, they're kind of like God in some ways, not in other. It's like mm. I see a photo of Simon Oliver and I yeah. say, well, it's like you in some way. Yeah. You, you just can't make that move no. in, in, in terms of things. Um, they're, they're, the, the likeness and the unlikeness completely coincide, yes. if, if, you, if you can think of it, it that way. Because, and therefore, you, you, to become, to see the likeness, you have to um, enter into the thing dynamically. You have to take it back 
into yeah. God. Yeah. You have to return to God yeah. with the thing. But in and in doing that, you become ever more, you see it's ever greater likeness to yeah. God. But of course, that's always an ever greater unlikeness. Yeah. And yeah. because the more closer you get, the more you see you're not really getting there. Yeah. And and so I think in that sense, analogy is is calling us into a, a, a dynamic naming of God. It's not something static. Right. And, and this, uh, to some degree, puts it in continuity with its original context in Dionysus, which is you know, liturgical. It's yeah. about the names of God and, yeah. and the naming of God. Yeah. yeah, as it became in Aquinas as well. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. Thank you very much, John, and thank you for joining us at the University of Nottingham. We hope that you'll be able to join us again very soon.